Thanks for tuning in. On this month's Live with Lenny we will be discussing winter perch jerkin, and taking a close-up look at three areas and three tactics that will put perch on your stringer this February. This episode is presented by Suzuki Marine. Hey everybody, this is Zach Dittmar, Fish Talk Art Director and Production Manager. Manager, uh, Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Live with Lenny. Um, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Suzuki Marine. Um, Suzuki Marine offers a five-year warranty currently, and there's numerous dealers in our area. There's a lot of benefits to selecting um, a dealer in your area because, you know, you have a five-year warranty. You're going to want to find someone that's close to home, so that you're going to get that annual service, your spring commission and your winter service, your low unit service. You want to get one somewhere, someone close by. So visit uh, fishtalkmag.com slash Suzuki and find our list of local dealers. You can also find a map here at the bottom of the page. So uh, tons to choose from, and there is more than just on this map, but um, this is quite a comprehensive list here. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on the angler in chief himself. Lenny, how you doing? Hey, what's up, Zach? Yeah, it's been a month. It's good to see you, but you know, I'm I'm a little jealous because uh, you went fishing without me. Yes, true. Um, sorry, dude. The opportunity arose. What can I do but take it? It's uh, I, I had a solid month plus change without fishing. It's the longest I've gone since I think I've been able to drive. But uh, shoulder injury had me down for a while, and I could not fish. And then yesterday, I was like, "Man, I'm feeling it, and I'm feeling good enough. I'm gonna try it." And I'm glad I did. And what's funny is we did exactly what today's topic is winter perch jerking so i'm sorry you couldn't be there no i'm, I'm glad you guys had a great day um, yeah. i know you would have loved to have been there sorry man <laughs> soon 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 so before we jump into the topic i do want to make a quick announcement because i was contacted today by one of our readers who's been a long time lover of fish talk and uh, there's this photo contest going on that Noah puts on. It's a national fishing con fishing picture contest. Have you heard of this? I, I think I, I saw a little buzz on Facebook about it. Yeah. yeah, so we have a Marylander holding a rockfish in the running. They've made it through like three rounds or something, and there's like three more. So if anybody wants to support the locals, uh, I couldn't figure out how to best describe this to go directly to Noah. But here's an easy out. On the Annapolis Anglers Club Facebook page, they have front and center a link that takes you right there so you can vote for the fish and the pictures there and everything. It's pretty darn cool. So if you want to support the locals, support the rockfish, hey, come on. What better than a rockfish for the picture in Noah's sport fishing contest, right? I mean, come on. So check it out. Anglers, uh, the Annapolis Anglers Club Facebook page will take you there. But don't go there right now. Wait. Wait until after tonight's Live with Lenny, because we're about to get into perch jerking big time. All right. Yeah, I think I, now you're right. It's Fred. I think Fred is the angler. Fred's an awesome guy. I met him yeah. at the Atlas Anglers Club, uh, talked fishing with him. He's cool. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. Uh, I'm going to go there myself and, and, and cast a vote. Rocking. All right. Let's let's should we bring up the first slide and get right to it? Sounds good. All right, so we're going to start with the toughest endeavor first. This is the hardest way to catch a yellow perch, but it works, and it's kind of cool. Go ice fishing. This is Eddie. He was up at Deep Creek uh, over, I think it was over the weekend or certainly within the last few days, and uh, you know, one of the cool things about ice fishing for yellow perch at Deep Creek is that there are some big perch in there. Now you also pick up walleye and possibly pike, pickerel, bass, crappy, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but if you're looking for perch, this is a way to find some really, really fat ones. Uh, go ahead and take us to the next slide if you would, Zach. So uh, this next picture is from that's several, a few years ago. Uh, and you can see the, the number one armament for catching yellow perch through the ice. And that is your tip up, laying on the ice right next to him there. Uh, really simple rig, just got a, a hook on the bottom. I like to put a split shot about six inches above it. You lower it down to the bottom, put your minnow on the hook, of course, 
lower it down to the bottom, and then pull it up about a foot and set the tip up. And then that way your minnow is swimming around there, you know, six inches a foot off the bottom. And uh, you set the flag under the little arm. When it pops up, you just walk over, grab the line, set the hook with your finger with a quick jerk, and then haul them on in. It's, it's, it really is a ball. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of times you go out there and you drill these holes in the ice and you stand there in three degrees and you just feel so ridiculous that when you actually catch a fish, it's like you have this great epiphany. The heavens have opened up and you just it, it's a great feeling of accomplishment. Uh, I know you've had tremendous success uh, ice fishing in your past, Zach. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Lenny, we actually have a question right off the bat here. And just a reminder, folks, if you have any questions for Lenny about the topic at hand, just pop them in there and we'll get to them um, when we can. So uh, Toby over on YouTube asked about um, where to buy ice augers. Do you have a recommendation? I mean, we're, we're not really in an ice fishing region. So, I mean, a lot of the shops don't usually carry them. Where should yeah. the anglers go? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So, um, and of course, you know, we'd always rather support the local tackle shop than go to like Amazon, right? So Amazon has got to be sort of the, the, the backup, the last resort. You know, I do know B&B just over the border in Pennsylvania, uh, they have augers. I've seen them there before. Um, that is the only place I can put my foot down and say, absolutely, they've got them. Uh, but they do have them. They're just over the Maryland PA border, uh, I think up near, 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 but not in York, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but if someone's familiar with B&B and can plug it into the comments as to the, the correct town, that'd be great. Awesome. All right, roll on to the next slide. Let's keep them going. And here we have my friend Bill. And believe it or not, uh, I was fishing with Bill this day. We were ice fishing, obviously. And this was on the Magathy River. So don't think the only place you can do this is at Deep Creek. Uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, Deep Creek generally freezes soonest and has a longer ice season than anywhere else around here assuming it gets one, doesn't, doesn't always get one these days. Back when I was a kid, it was reliable. These days, I mean, it's a little iffy. Um, but, you know, we had a real hard freeze one year, and uh, me and Bill went down there with some other guys, and we drilled holes in the ice in the Magathy, and we caught some perch. We got a, a white as well as the yellows. I think we also got a pickerel that day that we uh, released through the ice. So, you know, if there's hard water and there's perch underneath of it, you absolutely can do this, and it is effective. I would always recommend sticking with minnow for your bait because uh, they have that action under the tip-ups that, you know, you're not. it's not like working a jig. The tip-ups are sitting there. Now, on the other hand, you can see Bill's got in his hands a little fishing rod. He did have an ice rod, and you can put a jig on there and jig it around. Um, often doesn't get quite as much action as the minnows, um, but you can do it. It works. Oh, there, here comes Cody. Can you jig for him? Yeah, you absolutely can. Um, when you're, <clears throat> excuse me, if I'm setting up for a day of ice fishing, I will generally bring my five tip ups, you'll have five per person, and I'll set them up in a circle around me. Uh, and then I'll pick up my ice rod and I'll drill some more holes and I'll just jig holes until a tip up goes off. And if the same tip up goes off twice or ones in the same area go off, I'll slide the other tip ups that way and then I'll drill some more holes in the immediate vicinity and start jigging right there. Um, anything that would normally work for yellow perch will work. You can, you know, use a little tube jig or something like that. Jigging Rapala. Yep. Tommy's absolutely right. Those jigging Rapalas work really good. They zing around like this when you jig them and when they fall, they have a really cool action. Uh, small spoons work. There's the, the classic Swedish pimple. Um, and also little blade baits, really small blade baits can be very effective through the ice. Um, the cicada is is one i've seen good results with the cicada um so that's another option right there um one thing i do want to mention we've been getting some reports from deep creek over the last week but right now it's about four to six inches uh depending on where you are and it changes quite a bit depending on where you are i've heard as much as seven from one guy um and there is a potential for rain this week so I just want to mention, if you head out there and you walk over that ice, be really careful. Punch your exploratory holes as you go. Make sure you're walking on solid ice uh, because, you know, four to six inches is kind of minimal. You know, as a general rule, you want at least four when you walk out. And uh, anytime you have snow over the ice, which you have now, it insulates it. doesn't necessarily thicken up as much as you would like. 
um, and you can encounter thin spots. So be careful. Make sure you got some kind of tool in your pocket. You can stab the ice and pull yourself up with if you fall through. And for gosh sakes, make sure you do it with a buddy. This is this ice fishing is not something you should do alone because if you do go through, you, you're going to need help. So. Mm -hmm. Silver buddy, you, yeah. you you normally wear a float coat while you're out there, so you oh, know. Always, I, I all winter long, whether I'm on a boat or on the ice, I always wear a float coat. And it's interesting. I, I noticed that on Facebook, uh, there was a picture of one of the fish we caught yesterday up, and somebody said, "You know, why aren't they wearing life jackets?" And uh, and I think he responded, "But well, actually, Lenny's jacket is a life jacket. I always wear that. Always, 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 always in the winter time." So Pete's saying silver buddy, that's a neat one. I, I'm gonna have to check that out. I've never tried that, but now I might have to. <laughs> and and Tommy says the same thing. So. Oh, okay. Now I'm definitely gonna have to try that out because that's I haven't tried that one. All right, let's go on to a slightly less physically demanding way to catch yellow perch with the next slide because I, I like that preface. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and who who is that? I think I recognize that guy. Yeah, yeah. That that expert, might be expert fisherman. That might be Mr. Dittmar's right there. Now, do you remember where this picture was taken, Zach? I do. I believe that was Unicorn. Correct. Unicorn Lake. Uh, another place you can go to look for a yellow perch, of course, is on the eastern shore. Uh, you can work the rivers. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the mill ponds are a good option. Um, now, some of the mill ponds don't have many. I think they all have perch to some degree, but it's not a great fishery in a lot of them. Unicorn does seem to have a pretty good fishery for them. I don't know why, but a little better than the others. Uh, we get some at Johnson's, but as a general rule of thumb, they're pretty small. They're normally not really keeper size fish, uh, but Unicorn is a good bet for them. I've also had good luck for them at Y Mills, although I found that at Y Mills, you fish the whole dang lake. And you never catch one. And then in one spot, they're all right there. So you really have to like go on a search and destroy mission and figure out where they are. And you could spend all day not finding them. But, but if you find them, you bang on them. Um, now, normally the eastern shore mill ponds do not freeze over uh, just in a, in a general winter. You know, sometimes they do here and there for short, brief periods of time. But the shore stays a little warmer, and normally those ponds don't don't ice isn't a problem. That is not true right now. <laughs> um, actually, we heard from uh, Eric today that uh, I think was it Smithville that he confirmed was frozen over. I think uh, it yeah, was. we got a report from uh, Herb said uh, Herb uh, that uh, he sent us pictures that Smithville has ice. So right, right. So you know. We, we had that cold weather. The shore got a little blast of cold weather that we didn't even get so much on the western side here. Um, you know, they, they got a lot more snow than we did. So, you know, right at this very moment, you know, I wouldn't jump in the car and go there tomorrow. Now, we, we have some incoming rain over the next day. We had some today. We got some more coming. It's going to be really warm. Uh, that will break up that ice rapidly. I would expect that by the weekend, those ponds will probably be open. Um, possibly not, but they should be. All right, why don't you go ahead and take us to the next one, Zach? And uh, this slide is uh, a guy that a lot of people have fished with. If you fished on the Talking Trash offshore in the last couple of years, you fished with Josh. Um, he's an inveterate angler. He's been fishing since he was knee high to a grasshopper, and uh, he always lived next door to us. Uh, he has for over 20 years, so you know I've always always known him and. Uh, we went over the shore this day. This is on the Tuckahoe, uh, Tuckahoe Creek. And uh, you can see in the front of the boat, in the far left there, there's a minnow bucket. I'll tell you what, people, winter perch jerking, I don't even do it without minnow. Like, I consider it an absolute must. Uh, can you catch them on lures? Yes, you absolutely can. Will you catch more with minnow? <laughs> Sorry, but yes, you absolutely will. Um, why don't you go ahead and flip us to the next slide. It's really just a close-up taken from this. And you can see there, that's just a bare jig head. It's an orange and chartreuse jig head. That's all it is. Uh, a lot of times, that's all you need. You put the minnow on the bare hook, and you're just fine. Now, as a general rule of thumb, I'll be putting them on a shad dart. That That is more normal. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yesterday, 
as we were fishing and we caught the heck out of yellow perch yesterday. I, I don't know how many we caught, but you know, we took home a dozen. We released a whole lot more. And uh, my buddy Vadim was fishing with a shad dart and the fish just ate the hair off. You know, it happens sometimes that they, the wraps come loose and then all the hair is gone. Uh, and he, he was fishing two rods. So he was like, well, I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop the bite so good. So he stuck them in on the bare uh, shad dart head and threw it out and immediately caught a fish and just kept he fished with it all day and caught fish is fine. So don't hesitate to just put a bare jig head on there and put on your minnow. Now, in a lot of these areas, the way to fish this is going to be to put it right down to the bottom and either hover it just off bottom or cast it out and then bounce it along the bottom as slowly as you possibly can. Uh, the other thing that works often, particularly um, in areas like Martinek, where you have a big, deep hole in the creek off the chop tank, so off the chop tank, you have a big, deep hole in the creek. If you just put on a bottom rig and put a couple bull minnow in there and throw it out there and let it sit on bottom, Excellent tactic. Excellent tactic. Now, wait a minute, Rudo. What about grass shrimp? I always catch a ton of yellow perch on grass shrimp in the spring run. Well, yeah, you do. This is not the spring run yet, people. This is the pre-spawn phase, right? This is your wintertime perch jerking. Up until the perch move out of those deep downriver holes and start to go up into the spawning grounds, the minnow will generally outfish the grass shrimp. Now, once the fish get shallower and they go into spawning mode, I totally agree. It kind of reverses and the minnow will still work, but not as well. And they really start wanting the grass shrimp. And then there are times when they're just all about the grass shrimp. Uh, but at this particular time of year, we're talking February here, right? The water's still cold. The fish are deep. They're sitting in holes. They're sitting in channels. The minnow on the bottom truly is the ticket, really is. All right, go ahead and take us to the next slide, would you please? Sure thing. I uh, want to do a few questions while we're on the subject here. So, Hit me. Hit uh, Mark, me. Uh, well, I think you mentioned, uh, you know, you could use a shad dart as opposed to a jig. So why shad dart? You know? I don't know that there's any solid answer to that. You know, truth be told, like I say, the jig head works just fine. You probably could take a number of different small weighted lures and tip them with a minnow. And as long as you can get it down to the bottom and bounce it along there, my guess is it would be just fine. Um, I use bucktails, little bucktails. Uh, in fact, I had a little bucktail on yesterday. Not so little, actually. It was like a quarter ounce bucktail, you know, I don't know, three inches long maybe. Uh, because we, we had filled the live well with perch, I was kind of – I got into catch the giant mode, you know. And so I took a bucktail and I put on the biggest minnow in the bucket and I put it down there. And I was like, I'm going to catch a giant yellow perch. And that didn't happen. Pickerel kept eating it. Um, uh, we, we had a lot of pickerel mixed in. Um, but I have had that work before. And, uh, it, you know, it does not have to be a shad dart. That's kind of the standby. You know, that's sort of the norm. So you kind of answered that already. But will a, mar a marabou jig work? Yeah, absolutely. I have, I've used marabou jigs for just this. They absolutely will work. No question. All right. Um, we got a few questions about locations, but I think we're going to hit that in a little later. So yeah, let's hold the locations for a little bit because we are we are going to get there. We are going to get there, people. All right. So you ready for the next slide? Yeah, let's bring it on up, man. All right. So you had you had I saw some expert ice fishermen, expert kayak anglers, charter boat captains, and now 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 this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zach. <laughs> so even this is not from yesterday. This is from last year, but this is where we were yesterday. This is on the Pokemon. And uh, one of the cool things about fishing the Eastern Shore tributaries, uh, true of the ponds too, but it's very true, particularly the Pokemon. Pokemon gets so varied. Uh, you catch a yellow perch one minute, you catch a crappy the next. You catch a, a bass the next. You catch a pickerel. Yesterday, we caught a gar, a big gar. I mean, this thing was ginormous and dangerous looking. But, you know, it was really cool because we got to mix it up while we were perch fishing. And, you know, it's it's fun. Um, and as you can see, you know, the crappie and the perch in that river, both decent size. Let's note, just for the record, once again, I am wearing a float coat. So I do have my life jacket on. <laughs> it's built into the jacket. Uh, if anybody's interested in those, it's a Mustang. Uh, Mustang makes a really good float coat. Uh, they're not sponsors or nothing, but they 
just build a really good product. And the cool thing about the float coat is not only does it keep you afloat if you fall in the water, it's also really warm. So, all right, go ahead and pop us on to the next one. Let's take let's take a look at the guy I was fishing with yesterday. Or one of the guys, Eric, was out there with us. That's Vadim. Uh, that's also from last year. Uh, and I noticed when I looked at this picture again, ironically, that uh, he's dressed exactly as he was yesterday. Same hat, same glasses, same sweatshirt, same jacket. So, uh, but I wanted to put this slide up because this is very applicable to what happened yesterday. Can, can we make this one really big, Zach, so people can really see that fish? Thank you. So look at this fish's belly. You can see that its belly is kind of swollen out, right? It's, it's like drooping to a certain point. Um, these fish that we're catching right now, they're pre-spawn. The, the females are egg laden. And, um, you know, the yellow perch fishery is not what it once was. It's, it's better than what it was at a certain time, but it, it's nothing like it was, you know, decades and decades and decades ago. Um, and it kind of stinks that the best perch fishing of the year, yellow perch that is, takes place right at the spawn. Like, wouldn't it be great if we could catch all these fish after they spawn, right? So when you get into a good perch bite, which we had yesterday, um, and you catch one like this with the droopy belly, you might want to think about just putting it right back over the side. Uh, you know, five, six perch will feed a few people, you know, a couple. If you got a big family, you certainly don't need more than you know, six, eight, 10. Uh, and if you're going to catch, you know, you can catch 40, 50 perch in a day sometimes. Why not let the females like this go? It's tempting to stick them on the stringer. It really is because they're, they're big, right? They look big. But the truth is, if you get a skinny male who doesn't have that belly bloating out, right? You can look at the belly and see it's skinny. Um, it's got just as much meat on it. It, it truly does. It's got just as much meat on its back and, and the, and the, and the aft section uh, as the female does. It, it just looks smaller because it's skinnier, uh, but that's a good thing. So yesterday uh, we threw the first three fish we caught in the, in the I got a little live oil on my boat, we keep it rather than a stringer. Uh, we threw the first three in there regardless because we wanted to have a couple fish to take home and eat. Okay, fine. And after that, we like checked each fish out and said, okay, this one looks like a female. We're just gonna put it back. This one looks like a male in the box it goes. And that was kind of how we played out the day. And we kept as many as we wanted, you know, by the time all was said and done. Um, but it was nice to relieve those, you know, females with the big saggy bellies. Um, they, they are the future of the fishery. So just something to think about, something for consideration. All right. Do we have any more questions at this point, Zach, or should we go into location, location, location? Um, I think the only questions we have not touched on are location based. So. All right, let's take us let's take us to the next slide then. So uh, we're going to look at a specific place here, right? And this is the Pocomo. This is where I was yesterday. Go ahead and make that big again, Zach. Will you? Let's let's make sure everyone can see that. Good. Thank you. Um, now I want to be clear: all the tribs on the eastern shore like this are pretty very similar. You can go to the Pocomo, the Nanticoke, the Tuckahoe, the Chop Tank. When you get up river, and all these rivers are all the same. I'm using this one because um, I like to hit it a lot. Uh, I like that diversity I was talking about. And it's really secluded. It's kind of cool. Um, but this is true of all these rivers. You, you don't have to go here to catch the perch, okay? And what I did was I put the red lines down the middle for the channel. Because generally, like I was saying earlier, these yellow perch in the pre-spawn phase, they're going to get into the deep zones, right? And you want to look for squeezes in the channel. And I put these blue Xs where the wider section squeezes down. And that's often where you're gonna find the best concentrations of fish. Now, that said, it's fishing, people. Every day is different. You never know what the darn fish are gonna be. And I prepped this slide at the beginning of the week and sent it to Zach so he could do the Wizard of Oz thing with it in this presentation. And, uh, and then I went there yesterday, and just to make me look stupid, the fish were in a completely different place. They were actually in the channel uh, about where the R is in Pocomoke River, uh, right in the middle of the screen. They, they were right about there. They were where the channel, yes, perfect. They were where the channel widens out. 
now why were we, why were they there instead of in the squeeze? I got no idea. I have no clue why they were there instead of in the squeeze portions. But if you go here ten times, you know six, seven out of those ten times, they're going to be about where those blue X's are, as opposed to out in the middle of the channel where they just went to make me look like an idiot. Uh, but you know it's fish; they do things that we don't understand. Um, we had a low tide at about 10.45 uh, as it was going out. And for the first hour of the incoming, they were all right inside of that channel. At about 1 o'clock, after we had, you know, fairly high water come flow back in, wasn't high yet, but it was working that way, um, the bite stopped. We went outside of these red lines onto some uh, edges where there are weed beds in about uh, five feet of water. And then we started catching again. Um, so when the tide gets high, realize they may move out of these areas and start roaming around on the, on the shoals. Um, it's definitely easier to locate them during an outgoing or a low or semi-low tide when they, they are reliably fall up in these deep spots. All right, you want to go ahead and take us to the next one, Zach? And yeah. now we are going to look at a similar diagram. This is unicorn. Uh, that The blue X, the lower right blue X, I think that's right where you were when you caught yours, wasn't it, Zach? That uh, one the I was, yeah, a little, just about. I think I was up actually where the O in pond is. <laughs> Perfect. Around right. Little, so, right around that point there. There you go. Uh, again, we're looking at a squeeze in the channel. Now, it, it's a little bit of a stretch to call it a channel in Unicorn because I think it's, what, like four feet deep? <laughs> That's one of the shallowest, I think, of the mill ponds. It's very shallow. Yes, water. very shallow water. Absolutely. But, you know, relatively speaking, it's the deep spot. Uh, and then that upper X in the middle Historically, that's been a good area for them. Uh, I don't that day. I think we caught all pickerel up by there. But normally, you do get yellow perch there. And again, it's it's where the channel just tightens up. It's a it's a little tight spot in the channel there. Um, uh, Zach, before we go to the next one, what, what what location questions did we have? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, Sam asked if St. Mary's Lake was a good spot. Ah, so Sam, that's a great question. Uh, when I went to St. Mary's back in the dark ages, about 30 years ago, uh, we never caught yellow perch in that lake. And I fished that lake a lot. I mean, if I fished it anymore, I would have been on the five-year plan at the school. Okay. Uh, made it out in four by the skin of my teeth. Uh, we didn't catch perch there then. I don't know if they were stocked or if they were just in low numbers then. Uh, but today you do catch them. Um, I haven't fished it a heck of a lot in recent years. I think the best day I had there on them was like three mixed in with the crappy. Uh, but I've talked to other people who've called better numbers. Um, and, you know, it's not a winter run like these tidal tributaries where, where, you know, they're coming in to spawn and they really concentrate. But it's more like those ponds where they're in there. And if you can locate them, you, you can, you know, you can bang on them a little bit. Um, and I have talked to other guys who've done a lot better than I have on them there. I think, again, it's a matter of figuring out exactly where they want to be. Okay. So, um, our friend Eric, uh, ah, there he is hard to target them there. Okay. Um, I, 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 one time and Eric will know where this is. There's a, I think it's made of tires. There's a fish reef down near the dam. And I talked to a guy down there one time, and he had at least like a half a dozen, eight, ten, something like that. I was very jealous. And he caught him right there on that reef. Uh, I I was very jealous that he had that spot. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, so Eric had suggested that Alan's fresh is a good spot. Absolutely. And yep. Confirm what you said earlier about Johnson's having them, but mostly small. I think I've yep. only caught one there fishing there. The past couple of years, you know, it's uh, mm. more crappy, I guess, right? John. Yeah, a lot more crappy. Um, I never, I, you know, we don't normally target them. We pick them up by accident. Uh, and But they do normally seem to be small. You know, since he mentions Allen's Fresh, another one I want to mention real quick is Nanjimoy Creek off the Potomac. That's a fabulous creek for him. Fabulous creek. And we got a report, oh, 
was it yesterday or two days ago, uh, my friend David was, uh, went fishing up uh, in the Perryville area. Um, you don't have to be right at Perryville itself. There's lots of places you can go around there, just get in the channel. Uh, and they were in there biting well. He said they did have to dodge some ice flows. And he said there were a good number of boats fishing up there. There was like 10 boats fishing yesterday afternoon. Um, but he caught a lot of fish and, you know, had plenty to keep. He said it was about a three to one keeper to throwback ratio. I think they do tend to get more small males up there at this time of year than as opposed to the eastern shore spots. Uh, but minnows were doing it. And uh, he said some people were catching on plastics. And he said night crawlers as well, which is interesting. Um, you know, a little bit of a different territory up there. Unfortunately, uh, as I understand it, the docks at Perryville have been closed to the public. You can mm. no longer walk out on all those docks. You can still go to the park dock, um, and there might be some others up there, but the ones that historically everyone used to go up to, uh, the, the marina there, they, they closed off, so you can't really fish them anymore. So, you know, you want to boat for that. Um <clears throat> Or the state, I think the state park dock, you can't get them from. But Well, speaking of docks, um, can you recommend any other good fishing from shore spots? Yeah, absolutely. So that, that would be one possibility right there is the, the park up there. Um, let's see. So on the shore, uh, they may be up as far as Hillsborough right now. That's a guess. They may not. Um, what's, that, what's the name of that point, Zach? Is it Gravelly Point in the Tuckahoe? Is that right? Uh, um, no, Gravelly's on the Potomac. Stony Point? Rocky Point? Oh, yeah. Right. Which I is it? It's either Stony Point or Rocky Point. There's public access there. Uh, and the I'll tell you the trick there. It, it's it's, it's kind of tough. There's a, I don't know, 20, 30 yards of like two foot deep water with a bunch of snags. And then it drops off into the channel. And what you got to do is you got to put on a heavy bottom rig. Basically, you can't really can't fish lures there. Put on a bottom rig with like an ounce of weight. And you got to throw it way out there so it lands and sinks down in the channel. And then don't move it until you catch a fish or reel it in to check your bait. There it is. There it is. Uh, and then when you reel it in, you got to keep your tip high and reel really fast so you pull your rig over those snags. If you try and go slow or drag it along bottom there, you will get snagged and you'll lose your rig. Uh, so you really got to whale it out there. Uh, another great, you know, great one is Martinex State Park. Now, uh, that is in Denton. It's on uh, Watts Creek off the Chop Tank. Uh, it's a lovely place because there's a pavilion that is built out over the creek. And it's right at the deepest hole. It's 20 feet there. Man, I used to take the kids there every winter because when you got little kids, you need protection in the winter, right? And it's a pavilion. There's a roof overhead. So you could go there in the rain and the snow. didn't matter. You could fish all day. It was awesome. And it's chock full of fish at this time of year. Now, unfortunately, I learned just the other day, the pavilion is evidently under construction. They're repairing or replacing it. So if you go over to Martinek, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to fish from the shoreline before the pavilion which you can reach good channel there. Uh, it's not quite as good, but you can reach the deep water there. I'd go as close to that pavilion as I could and then kind of cast out to the left and try and get it out in front of the pavilion into that hole. Uh, but that's a really good primo shoreline spot. Let's see. So actually you can also fish in the channel at the Pocomoke in Snow Hill at the boat ramp. There's a bench to the right where you can uh, fish. And so, John, where I'm talking about is right there at the bench. Um, it's called Bird Park, B-Y-R-D, I believe. Uh, there's a boat ramp there. Now, you have to call ahead and have them open the bridge to get underneath the bridge. It's really low to the water. So any kind of boat, you got to call ahead. It, just Google uh, Snow Hill Bridge opening, and it'll pop right up with the phone number and the guys are really cool you call them up uh the day before and say hey could you open the bridge at nine o'clock and at three o'clock and they're like yeah sure so you know it's, it's pretty cool little setup and uh you uh i believe zach you know more about the kayak launch there than i do you can you 
can you fish from there? Is that are you allowed to fish from shore? Uh, there? I don't think so. There's a small floating dock at the Pocomoke River Canoe Company that's a public access, but the rest of it's kind of like the the, the canoe shop. So it, the, the, it's really just a launch. I don't think they want people fishing from. Okay. From well, that well there. the shoreline. So the shoreline along Bird Park is absolutely fair game. I mean, that's all definitely permitted. I've, I've launched the boat there many times and seen people fishing from there. And then down at Jane's Island, uh, you know, that, there's a lot of shoreline at Jane's Island State Park on the Pocomo as well. Yeah, that might be a little far down. You think that's too far? For it's, the only first... about, it's only about 10 miles, I think. But At this time of year, I'm, I'm guessing it is. Gotcha. It's not really the same kind of zone. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I'm guessing it is. Um, and also, you know, later in the run, you know, they'll be up, uh, oof, what's the name of the town you and I have gone there in past years where everybody fishes along the shoreline right next to the road. And then there's a little bridge on the Tuckahoe. Um, yeah. what am I thinking of? Are you talking about red bridges? No, that's not red bridges. That's, that's, chop, that's chop tank. Isn't it? Yeah. That's a final stage area. That's when they're actually spawning. Is it Hillsborough? Oh. With a little uh, yes, Hillsborough. That's what it is. Hillsborough with a little bridges. Okay, okay. And I think I said Hillsborough earlier. What I should have said was Greensboro, because that's farther downriver. That's if I was going tomorrow, I, I'd be working downriver a little bit, looking for holes downriver. I, I wouldn't necessarily be going all the way up. They they might be at Hillsborough by now. Heck, if I went to Greensboro and I didn't get any bites in an hour or two, I'd probably oh. all yeah, go to Hillsborough right. and try yeah. that. I know it wasn't a great spot, but I was wrong. Herb, I said Jane's Island. That's way too far down. That's Chrisfield. Shad Landing is the one, Pocomoke River State Shad Park. Shad Landing. Okay. Shad Landing. Sorry, Herb. I, I stay there every year. <laughs> so um, Herb also is the one who reported in on the ice at Smithville. So we know he's out there. And, oh, cool. He's his fish picks. So um, he's saying Thank that you. Really hope. Thank you, Herb. All right. Uh, so Dom Williams asked, about the Potomac and Patuxent Tribs. Are they hosting a good bite these days? Um, he asked another question, spe specifically like Jug Bay. I mean, you know, there's a good white perch run in Jug Bay. We know that. Yeah, Jug Bay has a good white perch run. Uh, you do get a good yellow perch run up there. Uh, I usually go a little farther up than Jug myself. I'll go above Wayson's Corner uh, to where the river really tightens up. Um, but that's always been a later season, more like a spawning event as opposed to a pre-spawn that I know of. Now, you and I both know, if those fish go up there to spawn, and they definitely do, they stage somewhere down river prior to that. There are going to be some holes you can find them in right now. The fact of the matter is, I don't know where they are. I have not located them in the pre-spawn months in that particular zone. There's There's got to be somewhere there. I, I know that in March, you get them up by Waysons. Um, so they got to be somewhere around there, but I don't know just where to say to go. If anybody does, please chime in. Now, on the Potomac, yeah, there are a ton of great spots. That's like I was mentioning, Nanjamoy. That's a prime one. And for you shoreline anglers, there is a fishing pier at Friendship Park uh, where you launch at, at Nanjamoy. You can't reach the very best spot, which is hang a right from the boat ramp. You go down maybe a quarter mile. And the river makes a hair turn, a, a hairpin turn, and there's a big hole there. I've always found that spot best for the pre-spawn fish. But you do catch fish there. And I've gone out and come back, and at the end of the day, talk to guys on the pier, and they got a bucket full of perch. So, I mean, it might be a little slower, but there's there's fish there. There's also a lot of catfish there. Holy cow. You're going to catch catfish, whether you want to or not, when you're casting out from there. Um Port Tobacco sees a run, uh, Madwoman sees a run, all those creeks. Uh, Eric mentioned Allen's Fresh before. That's a Potomac trib. Uh, all, all those creeks coming off the Potomac, you know, if they've got some water flow to them, they're going to see a yellow perch run, and those perch are going to be staging, you know, in those lower holes, you know, right about now. Man, I wish I knew where they were on the packs right now. That would be a much, much less of a drive for me to go get them. Tom, if you figure it out, will you give me a call, please? <laughs> so, um, 
speaking to the shoreline anglers, um, we already kind of mentioned a few, but uh, Packard mentioned the Tuckahoe Lake. That's a great spot for shoreline. Um, again, you're not getting much of the uh, pre-spawn because, I mean, you're, it's, you know, it's a lake, it's a dam, but there are perch in there. Um, crappy will bite this time of year, too, I think. Um, yeah. Well, Beachwood, we didn't mention Beachwood, which is right where you were uh, ice fishing earlier. Which yeah, is we didn't mention it. Uh, yeah, the store, the store the there. I mean, that place is not a secret. It's uh, <laughs> You need to get there early to get a parking spot, and it's going to be shoulder to shoulder. A lot of guys with waders going out. Um, so um, busy, busy area, but lots of perch there. It is. It is. Both both statements are true. I'm going to throw in there, just so folks know, if you want to go try and try it at Beachwood, um, a bobber uh, suspending a minnow about four feet down on a dart is a great way to go right there. Uh, I don't know why, but for some reason, I always have caught more there doing that as opposed to using a bottom rig or casting out and retrieving. And it's gradual going off the shoreline. There's not like a tremendous drop or anything. I don't know why it is, but it seems like the fish there love to hang about 10 yards beyond casting distance. So like you were just saying, you see a lot of waders there. The guys that put on waders and wait out 10, 15 yards from the shore, they always seem to have the heaviest stringer. Always seems to be the case. Hmm. Well, I just got a new pair of waders, so. Uh, <laughs> there you go. I have to try that out. Um, more intel from Herb. Uh, Port deposit area of the Susky is another good pre-spawn area, so. Um, and I guess that, that's short, you know, there's some shoreline availability there. It's just, you know, it's a lot of water. Um, yeah, and if they're a Perryville, they got to be there. I got, I mean, I, I would think they got to be there. Like, that should be happening right now. There's two public boat launches right there at Port Deposit, so I guess, you know, you could essentially fish there. I, I assume Lapina would be good too, right? Uh, it's same zone. I, I would think so. I don't, I can't swear to it. I, I haven't been there or heard a report there, you know, so far this year, but I would think so. You know, the, the reports, our reports got really depressed about three weeks ago when we had the first dump of snow and it seemed like a lot of people just stopped fishing. <laughs> mm. The The volume of reports dropped off radically. They're, they're starting to come back now. This week we got a decent number, you know, but seven river spots. Zach, I'm going to bounce that right to you because you know better than me, man. Well, um, I've only spent one day on the Severn this year. All we caught was pickerel, but uh, I do have some friends that live up in Crownsville, and I, I've seen them catch a few, but I, I just don't think the populations have bounced back. But they used to – I mean, like, Main and Deer Creek off Round Bay was was a, was a hot spot, you know, uh, for, you know, perch. So I, I think there's some there, but I, I, I haven't heard any. So we, we call reports. Years ago, we caught a few in Ray's Pond when we were pickerel fishing. Um, but the south is also a very hard river for them. I think worse than the Severn by a long shot. And um, I was, it was told to me that when they built 97, there was a lot of dramatic runoff that happened right during the spawning months. And it pretty much wiped out the populations. They like eliminated an entire spawn, maybe two, and just really beat on the fish but yeah tough it's going to be a tough one i want to uh take it take a second to just throw a nod to the uh, arundel river keepers they're doing a great job of enforcing when new construct last year there was a big uh runoff in the magazine and, and they were there enforcing it you know making sure that kind of stuff goes doesn't go without punishment you know because the, i mean they actually had uh you know photos of of the eggs just getting the the, the yellow perch eggs being destroyed oh. so um you know Thank you, guys. Thank you, water keepers, river keepers. Um, so any offer, uh, any advice on catching minnows? Oh, man, at this time of the year, go to anglers. <laughs> anglers and Clydes both uh, always have them in stock. Um, you might want to call ahead if you're driving because sometimes they do, are running low. Um, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I've, I've moved to a water access community. And on hot days, you know, we haven't had any of those in a while, but on like 50 plus degree days, I'll go down to the ramp and in the minnows, they come out of the, the depths. And uh, if I throw my uh, trap down there with the, I, I, I use Martin potato rolls. They love them. <laughs> Interesting. I've never, I've never been able to catch the minnow myself once the winter set in. 
And then you got the you got the Bait Boys, of course, out near Cambridge. And I yeah. I, I think you can reach them on Facebook. And uh, I I think I don't know if they have them year round or not, but uh, I think they have like a, a facility where you can uh, pick them up. So uh, check out the Bait Boys. That's uh Cas Kenny, David Confair, and uh, Damien. All right. So uh, oh wait, Robbie's. Robbie likes uh, pizza, pizza crust. crust. <laughs> yeah, I got pizza. Yeah, I'm not giving up my pizza crust. Minnow like pizza. Okay, I thought you put the minnow on the pizza. Anchovies, right? <laughs> All right, we got some science questions here. Uh oh. Oh so, boy. So, what is the time of year and water temperature that triggers the spawn? And also, what's the water depth typically of spawning fish? What What was the second part of that? Uh, the depth. What depth are the spawning fish usually at? Okay. So the spawning fish are shallow. Like you'll see them sometimes. Uh, you know, if you go up to Tuckahoe, go uh, if you launch at Hillsborough, go upriver until you almost can't navigate it anymore, and look over the side, you'll see them. You'll see river herring spawning. You'll see the yellow perch. You you, you see them. Um, they're that shallow often. Uh, I, I don't know if they also spawn deeper. I suppose they might, uh, but you certainly can see them. They're that shallow. Now, as to the time of year and the water temperature, so the spawn. When I was a kid, April was yellow perch month. Today, if you wait until April, they've already spawned. <laughs> like you might get the very tail end of it in April. It's happening earlier than it used to. Um, I suspect that if it's warm by the end of February, you'll be getting into the spawning grounds, maybe even by the middle of February. Places like we were talking about earlier, Red Bridges, where again, it's, it's shallow. Right, the fish are moving up to the very headwaters. They're going up to like the fall lines of these these little rivers and streams, and um, yeah, you know, now late February is not necessarily too early for that, and by the end of March, it, it could well be all done. Um, but generally, the much the month of March these days is sort of the right time frame. As to the exact water temperature, I don't know the answer to that question. We're we're gonna have to go to the science geeks for that one. That's that's above my pay grade. Where's Eric Z when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, there was a new tackle shop opened up uh, a year or two ago. Rusty oh. Hook and Easton they apparently have minnows. That's uh, for you, Billy. Um, Excellent. Very cool. I've, you know, I've, I've been in the Rusty Hook even. I, I, I went by there uh, over the summer, and but I did not know they had minnows. So that's really good to learn. You know, fish, fish Bones has had minnows, too. Uh, recently oh, so uh, fish sure. boats up there on a uh, mountain road yep yep and you know i don't know this for a fact but i would bet money that the tackle box has them if you're down south um in lexington park because they generally whatever bait you want they normally are very strong on having a really good bait supply um, um i i just gotta put this up because it's funny but i we're not condoning this no dom no you don't go to petco you can't <laughs> <laughs> now i do find interesting that you know the ang anglers was selling the big salties which are used out midwest i think mm -hmm. and uh they're essentially just a hybrid goldfish a black goldfish, yeah, so, goldfish. I mean, but, but you know no I, I, using <laughs> goldfish as bait is not i don't think that's legal i don't i don't think it's legal so hey we're I, not no, we're not gonna tell uh yeah i don't know i i think there are some legal issues surrounding goldfish aren't there yeah, probably. Okay, Denton Rod and Tackle has been and shrimp. All right, awesome. So Denton guess, Rod and Tackle is that, I'm not even familiar with that story. Uh I wonder if that's the old Tuckahoe sportsman. Is no, it? I think no, I think there's two shops over there. Huh. Yeah. Uh, another yep. tackle shop I gotta go check out. Yeah, Sam Sam followed up there. Denton so. Rod and Tackle, okay. Huh. All right. And I guess Just Speak Outdoors has those. I guess everyone has minnows nowadays. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Call your local tackle shop. <laughs> uh, and while you're talking to them, ask them if they have ice augers. I was shopping for ice augers. Now, I will. I, I hate to, you know, I do want to support the locals, but I have all this Ryobi lithium stuff. You know, I got, like, I got chainsaws and, you know, my drivers and, you know, everything. Leaf blower. They make a Ryobi ice auger. What? Yeah. So it's a lithium. No and it uses the same batteries I already have. It's like 400 bucks, though. But, but I'll tell you, I, Ryobi, I can't break it. 
you know that's that's very cool but 400 bucks sounds pretty steep for like maybe a two-week season <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right um well we, we got another slide lenny i think we're kind of caught up on questions oh we do i forgot about the last slide <laughs> go ahead and pop it on up there so i just i i wanted to put this one in because there are some folks who they just they enjoy fishing and they don't enjoy using bait and they just don't want to use bait. As it just comes down to that. They just don't want to do it, right? And I, I respect that as long as they're still having fun fishing. If they don't want to use bait, who cares, right? Let them do whatever they want to do. So I wanted to point out my personal favorite lure to use when bait isn't in the cards. And you, I, I had the picture of the perch and then I was like, oh, man, you can just barely see it, but you can't really. You can see in that perch's mouth, you can see the hint of red. And that little tube jig on the left, that's the whole package. Uh, a little two-inch red and white tube jig. If you just flick that thing right along the bottom, they will smack that. And there will be days when the fish are really active, and that will work as good as anything. It will work as good as a minute, right? There, there will be days like that. Uh, generally, when it's this cold, they don't happen. You get you, that's what happens, you know, on like the first 55 degree day of the month, you know, uh, or after it starts to warm up and into the spawn itself. That's a really good lure. But if I had to pick one lure and I wasn't allowed to have any bait at all and I was going winter perch jerking, that would be what I would pick. I'd grab that little guy right there. So I just wanted to throw him in there as well. All right. Do we have any questions? We, we did we rock through it? We might have rocked right through it all, huh? Yeah, I think we did. How are we doing on time? We're even on the early side. We usually run a little late, so that's I guess that's good. <laughs> yeah. Tommy chimed in. Hand me a yes, your feather jig on those finicky days. Another. I gotta check that one out. I don't know that one. I, that's uh, uh, Tommy must. He knows. He he knows some lures that I don't know. That's another one I have. I don't know it. I've never tried that. Never uh, tried it. That little, uh, oh, oh, I can't even see that. I know you guys cork and minner, but can you? <laughs> but you can also put a dry fly under the bobber. I was actually doing that last year for uh, pickerel, and uh, uh, you know, it was a big fly. It was a big bullet, bullet head fly. But uh, did it work? Yeah, I mean, I call like a. 22 inch, I think, doing that, you know, but okay, okay, but you know, I don't know, I might try it again. I don't know. Uh, so Eric Jackson asked, Will a minnow on a dart also bring pickerel if they're in the same water? Yeah, good gravy, yes. At times, you will be cursing it because you're gonna have a light leader for the perch, right? You're gonna have like a six pound, maybe an eight pound leader because you're perch fishing, and then Mr. Pickerel's like. You're going to go to set the hook, and there's going to be nothing there. And then you're going to reel in empty line and be like, what happened? And what happened was the pickerel got your jig and your minnow. Um, yeah, you get them a lot. In fact, yesterday, you know, I hesitate to throw numbers around because I don't, I didn't keep count. But if we caught three dozen yellow perch, we probably caught a dozen and a half, two dozen pickerel. I mean, and, and fishing those same exact stuff. Um, the marshy hope is a little odd in that respect and that the pickerel also go into the channels and sit on bottom. I don't know why. Um, on a high tide, they go all over the place. But for whatever reason, in that particular river, on a, on a low tide, they, they go right into the channels and go right down to the bottom. Maybe because that's where all the bait goes. Um, and yeah, it's all, when you're trying to catch the perch, it can almost be problematic at times because they cut you off so much because you got that light leader. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, um, before we say our goodbyes, I just wanted to uh, kind of reverse a little bit because I, 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 I neglected to inform the world that on fishtalkmag.com, you can find tons of editorial uh, on some of the topics we talked about tonight. Uh, obviously, maybe we should do the wrap up at the end because we don't want people to just go away. But, after, you know, later on when you're when you're feeling bored and you want to read up on some ice fishing uh you can use our search box on the website or you can uh, revisit this video and type that right in the box there for the mid-atlantic ice fishing spectacular i i forgot we have the links ready 
Yep. And then there's also some other, uh, the going numb for yellow perch articles. So, yeah, you know, I, I end up emailing people the same thing two, three times a week. People will shoot me an email and ask about a very specific thing. Like how do I catch yellow perch in February in the, East, on the Eastern shore? And I, I, I'm always like, I, I could type back a page long response because it's not, you can't answer that question in two sentences, right? Uh, but I know we have a feature article that addresses exactly that on the website. And when you go to fishtalkmag.com in the upper right, there's a little box that says search, just plug in yellow perch and you'll immediately get, you know, all the feature articles we've ever done regarding yellow perch. And there's, going numb for yellow perch, which is all about, you know, what we've been talking about tonight. Um, so there, you can answer a lot of questions that way. You really can. Um, it's, it's, I think, a very valuable resource for a lot of different fisheries. Awesome. Woof. All right. I think it's time to say goodnight and go get some dinner. I got yellow perch. I got yellow perch sitting over there in the fridge waiting to eat <laughs> and, and cleaning them was no easy task. Believe me, I did as much work cleaning them as I did to get to Snow Hill and fish. So I'm kind of psyched. Well, you know, I've been spending so much time pickerel fishing. I might, maybe I just need to put a few perch in the, in the fridge. I think all I have is like one rockfish fillet and like one bag of white perch from the summer that I've, I've been hoarding, you know, so uh, I'm about out of my, my reserves are almost depleted. Yeah, it's that time of year. It's that time of year when you open the freezer and you go, oh, no, there's like nothing left. <laughs> uh, well, I uh, just want to, uh, again, thank Suzuki for sponsoring this episode of Live with Lenny. And if you visit fishtalkmag.com backslash or forward slash Suzuki, um, you'll find all the area dealers, more information about their five-year warranty. If you're looking to repower, this is the time to do it. Um, and they, you know, various dealers are still offering some pretty good financing, uh, some, you know, for those. So you can reach out to various dealers for that. And uh, I think well, last year, Suzuki actually did a, a financing deal. So uh, keep an eye out for that. They, they may be doing another one this year. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Zach. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah. Should, uh, should we end on a rocking note? I mean, oh, yeah, let's. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you next month, March 3rd, for the next episode of Live with Lenny. See ya.